welcome to Pandora's Box. Today I'll be doing a set review for Force of Wheels, the Epic of the Dragon Lord. The Epic of the Dragon Lord is a new expansion from the Force of Wheels franchise. It is made by Ice Spy Productions. This set is in English and per booster box there are 36 packs, per pack there are 10 cards. There are a total of 106 cards within this particular expansion. This was released in November 2020 and surprisingly, this is a made in Singapore product. And today's review will be graded based on my patented Virgin system. First up is Vision. The episode of Dragonlord tries to copy certain elements of what makes other TCGs good. I can see a little bit of magic and card fight vanguard in here. It has a team of dragons and like witches and of course boots. It is obvious that there's a background story here. I didn't really dig into it, and, but I don't expect it to be fantastic. My buy is very, very low here. As long as there's a story, uh, in terms of law, this will be a pass. And it doesn't matter if the story is shit. And the intention, I think, for this expansion is just to prolong the inevitable. I, I do not think that this IP is going to survive long term. And this is a very, very, very small set, especially for its box size. Especially, usually, uh, for a 36-pack box like this, right? A nice number, total set number of cards, right, will be like 180 cards. And this is how usually Pokemon and Digimon does it. Smaller sets like, right, like Yu-Gi-Oh! and Card Fight Vanguard usually comes in much smaller boxes. And even for certain Pokemon sets like Champion's Path and uh, Shining Fates, right, they only come, when the set size is small, the Pokemon sets only come in Elite Trainer boxes. So full 36 pack booster boxes seem like a bit of an overkill for a set, for a set that ha only has 106 cards. And in terms of imagination, this is the world building does not seem overly imaginative or creative. It's like it's, it's always something you've seen before. In terms of illustration as criteria, the variance between good quality artwork and bad quality artwork here is very, very high. The best 10 20 cards here are very well done, and some have equal or even better quality than Card Fight Vanguard. But the rest, the majority, are so bad that it feels like the company commissioned cheap artists from Fiverr to fill up the rest of the set. And it feels like 100% of the artwork here are digital art, so there's no watercolors or acrylics or any other medium like oil and other things like that. But this doesn't really matter unless you are specifically looking for it. This set does have a card fight vanguard look and feel to it, but it feels like a cheap imitation version. There's no blood and gore here, but at least they are not stingy with the big busty waifus. The set also does have an uniform and coherent feel to it, but too bad it is coherently bad. When it comes to realization, the card quality here is top of the line. Like the Final Fantasy TCG, the card bags have a very, very nice textured feel to it. The card itself also feels much thicker and heavier than Magic or Pokemon cards. There's also minimal curling for the foils. Unfortunately, like the Final Fantasy TCG, the fantastic card quality is wasted on a not-so-fantastic IP. There's much effort to insert flavor text into as many cards as possible, but it's usually limited to only one-liners. There's so much empty spaces in the text boxes of a lot of the cards. The bad translation also does not help. The baseline effort is here. I can see that the company understands what are the elements that make up a successful TCG and it at least tries to hit a lot of them. But the company feels like the kid right, who tries to spot questions for his final exams. The booster box is right around the price of a Magic Draft box. It's definitely cheaper than Pokemon booster boxes. And it is not expensive considering the size of the booster box. But if I take into account the set size of only 106 cards, right? then I think the box is a little bit overpriced. The company tries to implement a lot of elements that contribute to a successful TCG, but it feels like they are short-handed and can only do 30% effort. In terms of the gamble or gacha element, I'm not too sure does Force of View cards even have any value or not. Do, do, are there even people out there who buy these cards? I was browsing TCG Player and there are actually a couple of cards Full art cards, they are in the $80 to $100 range. But I suspect that the market for these cards are practically non-existent. And in terms of short-term value, I don't see people falling over themselves trying to get certain cards here. I don't see any FOMO. And I guess most of the sealed products are sitting on shelves in Amazon warehouses collecting dust. This is my Virgin Force of View box. So emotionally, I'm starting from a baseline of zero. So, but this, this set doesn't really add much. So after this set, I guess 
in th- from 0 to 100, again, I'm now at 10. My heart is always going to go racing whenever I see big busty waifus. And I'm numb to most cards that don't feature big busty waifus. But luckily, there's a quite a bit of fan service here. When it comes to innovation, I understand that there are some new rulers or characters or creatures to play with. Uh, so in terms of gameplay, this is not a complete fail. But this is just a normal booster box. As a product, there's no innovation here because the booster box is the industry standard. I mean, it's the, it's the, it's the common theme throughout the whole industry. In terms of IP, the whole of Force of View is becoming irrelevant. So we call, forget about new IP. Its existing IP is treading water and it might drown. And when we're talking about uh, Fire Furrows, okay, trying to get normal booster boxes is already a big hassle here. I live in Singapore and I could not find any Force of View products here. Interestingly, this product is actually made in Singapore, but I could not find any booster, uh, booster boxes for sale here. I actually had to go onto Amazon and I had to buy it from uh, Amazon and they had to ship it over from the United States. So, I mean, I, I don't understand the logistics, but I believe that there, um, there are no peripherals, there are no structured decks, there are no bundles, just the booster boxes because I think um, the company, the parent company itself does not have enough uh, resources I mean, to produce or there's also no demand for these uh, additional products, these additional peripherals. The last criteria I use to assess the set is novelty. This is the beginning of a new cluster but I do not think this is significant even to Force of View fans. It might be nostalgic to Force of View diehards, but I think sometimes, right, we just need to let go. And the set, I don't think it's iconic now, but it will turn out to be iconic if it happens, right, to be the last expansion set before this, I, uh, this whole IP goes badly up. And unless, unless the company can find a way to rejuvenate itself, silk products long term will have no value due to non-existent demand. You can argue that prices will go up due to lack of supply, but I wouldn't be surprised if there are warehouses out there full of unsold products sitting on the shelf. I feel like there's an overlap with a lot of the segments that Force of View is trying to target. Uh, it has a bit of fantasy, but it's dominated by magic. It has a bit of those anime over-the-top uh, monsters and busty waifu, but that segment goes to Cardfight Vanguard. And unfortunately, there's no blood and gore here like uh, Flesh and Blood. This feels like a cheap knockoff of many of the most popular IPs in the TCG industry today. So, not original. After analyzing this set according to my patented virgin criteria, it is time to review my final grade for this product. Before I do that, please remember to like and subscribe to Pandora's Box. Please help me to share this as well because sharing is caring. I post new videos daily, so please remember to check back for more content like this. I'm going to give the Epic of the Dragon Lord one star. As much as I hate to say, I think this is worse than Champion's Path. I hated Champion's Path, but at least that set was very polished. For a start, this set is undersized. Most of the comments seem to be commissioned to cheap Fiverr artists, but at least they are still original art. Unlike a certain IP, <coughs> Final Fantasy, which uses screenshots to try and smoke us. Overall, it just feels like a consistent lack of effort here. Like for example, if you need 10 people to do a proper, proper expansion, a proper product, then it feels like iSpy production is trying to do it with only 3. When done well though, I feel that Force of View has the potential to be among one of the top franchises in TCGs. Unfortunately, it is failing and most probably it is due to lack of resources, which in turn leads to declining sales, which in turn leads to even lesser resources and the cycle goes on. I don't know how iSpy Productions can turn this around, but I see a diamond in the rough here. There is a lot of potential, but at this moment, this is not a good product. And this is why I give the Epic of the Dragon Lord one star. This is my review for Force of Views, the Epic of the Dragon Lord. Am I being too harsh? Do let me know in the comments. If you like what you see, please subscribe to my channel for more box openings, set reviews, top 10s, and content curated for nerds in general. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!